Hey guys, it's Sid here with SVTPerformance.com and as you can see, we are in Florida at VMP Performance. This is their GT500 that we've shown on the channel before. Mr. Starkey himself is going to take us through some of the intercooler upgrades they have for the Predator 2650 powered motor. So, so uh, 3100 is all the rage right now, the new 3.1 liter TVS, but this still has a 2650 on it. But I wanted to talk to everybody about something that was very uh, important to supercharger upgrade and development, which is cooling. Looks like you've got us three intercooler cores set out here. And, you know, from this far away, it's tough to tell the differences, but there's definitely some major differences between the three. So some pretty cool stuff. This is our original 68 millimeter street core that you probably saw in a video earlier this year. This is our 81 millimeter race core, and this is a unreleased 87 millimeter ultra core. So the easiest way to spot the difference is just the thickness of the core. You can see this one is sticking up quite a bit from the flange, just a little bit on this guy, and this one is actually below the flange height. This one's factory height, but it is a better cooling technology. So basically the core is different and it's more efficient than the factory core. Yeah, working with PWR, they have some awesome bar and plate technology that is actually more efficient in the way that it transfers heat to the water. And we are also able to play with other elements of the design, such as the fin count, the water flow rate internally, everything, and basically optimize. So. It's out there on the interwebs a little bit, but we are coming out with a 3100 for this car and it is going to reuse the factory lid. However, we had to make sure that we addressed the intercooling limitations properly. You know, some people are saying that we need to have a dual pass intercooler, that we need one of these big things that's in the lid. We've already proven with our Odin supercharger system, you don't necessarily need a huge intercooler core. You need the right intercooler core and you need to carefully watch pressure drop across the intercooler core. So that's uh, a big thing that, uh, well, we hit on it in earlier vids is um, it's all about moving that CFM. And if you can move airflow through this core more efficiently on a positive displacement blower, that pays massive dividends. There's more magic to it than just in the core itself. You guys have played around with the ports as well. As you can see, this is sort of your standard style uh, water inlet outlet port. And this is the high flow D style. And we are now making a 16 A in fitting to go with that. Now the cool thing about this AN fitting, it's completely modular. We have a part here that you can change out for the stock round ports. You can run 16 AN to one inch fittings, or you can run 16 AN to three quarter inch fittings if you have not yet upgraded your factory coolant lines. So the, what makes this such a big deal is, if you look through this D port on this thing, can you see how much of the core is exposed versus this is the stock style set up. And basically you get, what is that percentage wise on flow? It's probably increase. another 30% increase in surface area to reduce the water side restriction. So that's more water flow through the core. The more water flow you can get through it, the more efficiently it can cool. Yeah, the more heat it can carry away from the air. And let me tell you something, with intercooler cores, you want as much water flow as you can get. You can never have too much. So that plays into a part that we showed on Chuck's car earlier in a previous video. Your guy's water tank. And uh, this one is a rapid prototype, 3D printed. This was the very first one. It's actually a puzzle piece, so it's not uh, functional. Yeah. Don't try to fill this up with water. But um, one of the really cool things about the Odin ice tank, it actually fits the Predator with the heat shield removed or trimmed up. I know Jay's really proud of his heat shield and him and I talked about this. We can trim the back side of it to make room for the tank. And the really cool thing about this on the 2020 GT500, there is currently no reservoir whatsoever on this car. There is just a fill point. Yeah, so this is not really a reservoir this is basically where you can just top off your uh, intercooler coolant fluid 
Um, there's basically the fluid is just what is in the core that's in the car and in the heat exchanger. There's no larger tank. And uh, that's bad for just having less coolant to capacity to work you want with. Some yeah. capacity, you know, in this case, this will give you the ability to add ice for drag racing, which listen, this car is never meant for drag racing, but people freaking do it anyways. That's <laughs> correct. So uh, just like we showed earlier uh, in the other video, it uh, tucks in right there. It will have a valve. If you're at the track, you can drain your extra water off. And uh, I'm guessing on this setup, you've got, uh, uh, you'll be plugging off one of these yeah. ports. You'll only be using one port, plug that one, just use, this will be your outlet, this will be your return. Yeah. So this car's got a couple other parts too from VMP. It's got our billet fuel rails. Which, sorry, they're a little bit dusty because we actually drive the car. It's got our 105 throttle body. It's got a smaller pulley. It's got our tune on it. Yeah, so the last time we showed this car off, we were just playing with that 105 throttle body. And I don't think we got it completely dialed in at that time. But now you guys have it set up where customers can buy this thing, bolt it on, have a tune for it. It's, it's beautiful. It's yeah. absolutely perfect. It um, works great. Yeah, especially with uh, this upgraded pulley. And they keep changing colors. We're black. We've settled on black now. <laughs> no, okay. This blower is ported by Jokers to match the throttle body too. Okay, so that's another thing. Uh, I think we showed it off oh, when yeah. we had this on the dyno previously. If you don't port match it, you're not taking full advantage yeah. of that larger throttle you body. You really need to port the supercharger to get the benefit from the 105. Now, our new supercharger is designed for at least a 112 up to a 125. Um, so we're going to be offering an even bigger throttle body than the 105, but that's just a little sneak peek into that. Yeah. And then of course, uh, if you're going to be running that bigger blower, you're definitely going to want to, uh, go with the D-port style and as big a line as you can possibly get yeah. on the thing. And you know, all this stuff will be offered in packages. Um, we're actually, as this car sits, this is going to have a lot of the parts in it that our new EO drag pack for the 2020 Shelby GT500 is going to have. We're actually getting an EO number on uh, a couple different packages for the stock supercharger. And then of course our 3.1 liter supercharger will have an EO number for everybody out in California that wants to run one. Do you have any figures on uh, the pressure drop differential, the difference between the factory core and even uh, your replacement core, as so we can get an idea of the efficiency of that core. So, with the that's it's a really good question, Travis. There, with the factory supercharger, we were fighting how thick of a core we could put in there. We actually had to make some design changes to the casting to fit this 87 millimeter core in the new 3100 supercharger. Okay. And that's going to be the one that we're going to tweak to get as little pressure drop as possible. Um, one to two PSI pressure drop across the intercooler is ideal. Yeah. And the factory one's probably a little bit higher than that. It's a little bit higher and it, it just quickly gets overwhelmed. It's yeah. always a balance of heat how much heat you can carry away versus how free flowing you can make the core. Yeah. So that's uh, another thing that uh, plays into all this is uh, just the velocity of the water you're moving through it, how much water, how much heat you can get that water to absorb, how quickly you can get it out. And uh, then when you're dealing with capacity, you have more cooler water to absorb that heat, make your big power much longer than you could without it. Really like that D-port design, it looks really nice. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, one thing that I noticed, and I know guys are gonna point this out and wanna know why, you can see this sort of raised lip inside uh, the factory version. There's no point in knocking this out more than what the diameter of your tube going into that is. So that's what that raised lip is. But if you look at their D-port design, the lip on this one is much smaller because the wall is thinner on the piece that they're making out of billet aluminum here. to fit perfectly, and of course you got an O-ring seal on that so it seals up nicely. An O-ring seal around here too. Great. It's gonna seal up against your face. And yeah, it's a great looking piece. Nice billet aluminum. And I like the modularity of it, so if a guy wants to run you know the factory lines for a while he can do that then he can upgrade his fittings go to larger lines 
looks like you guys are really making this thing uh, modular for people who want to build it as they go. That's something that we've been really successful at in the past and we wanted to continue that with the 2020 GT500 upgrades because not everybody wants to drop a whole new supercharger on the car, make the car look different. We've actually had our Odin supercharger on the Predator engine. It performs great. It fits if you change the thermostat housing, but this car is so unique and so special. We wanted to give people the ability to run the factory lid and or even one of the new billet lids that are out and then you know upgrade as their horsepower goals change yeah you know gt500 guys love their little snake and their hand-built plaque here so <laughs> if you can keep that lid without you know a huge sacrifice in uh power or efficiency you know why wouldn't you yeah so the new 3100 will let them do that yeah that's great well thanks for showing us the car thanks for stopping by travis